Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we're here. This is going to be week number 10, I believe, of the NCP and we've been on a pretty interesting ride here. So I feel pretty not great about how much effort I've been able to put into these battles and it just kind of sucks because I generally pride myself in putting some time and some thought into whatever I do and try not to make excuses, but um, it's just been difficult to stay motivated. Regardless, we're here against Sir Jorge. He is uh, without any wins this season, although... He has a very, very scary team, and we do see the Rubombi, the Gyarados, the Avalug, the Rotom Mo, uh, the Charizard, and the Phalanx. Now, right off the bat, seeing no Poltegeist was insane to me. I had to do so much to try to mitigate the Poltegeist. Um, it's the main reason why the Malamar is here. The Malamar is really specially defensive. To so try to take a hit from the Poltegeist and be able to hit it back reasonably hard um the Rabombi was really scary to me uh i dedicated my entire copperaja to it i have a very specially defensive copperaja here but other things the unpheasant was mildly reasonable that it, that it could come but uh it didn't end up coming and i believe the only other thing you left behind is is the ferris seat and the type null the type null was hugely scary but thankfully it's not here other than that everything else is reasonably standard uh i do not feel that great about how much offensive presence i have obviously my entire offensive presence is going to come mainly from the dragapult and the, and the raichu and everything else is kind of meant to kind of deal with certain threats like the eldegoss is here to spin and can potentially deal with things like the gyarados uh, the Copperaja is meant to kind of deal with the Rabombi, and the Malamar is here to kind of deal with the Poltegeist, and the Milotic is just here in case anything else gets way out of hand here. But uh, with that being the team, again, I don't feel the best about it, but this is what I felt had to come, and if my checks can take certain mods out or deal enough damage, I think I have enough offensive presence that it could come out on top in the end, but we're going to get right into the match here. So once again here, I end up leading off with the Raichu, and I do kind of feel like Raichu is a kind of catch-all lead. Uh, I can kind of just deal a lot of damage, and it can... Um, cycle in and out especially when i believe i outspeed the entire team except for the robombi the, the robombi i don't outspeed but i didn't really expect the robombi to lead here and regardless i could probably take a single hit kind of pivot out and kind of figure out what i want to do from there so i very quickly just click volt switch i didn't want to think about this turn one too too much but it does reveal to be scarfed so two weeks in a row my opponent leads off with a scarfer and i take a whole heap load of damage before i'm able to get a volt switch off and uh, we do take that on two. I don't quite remember what that role looked like, uh, but I do believe that this confirmed that it was modest. Um, I believe Timid couldn't get a roll up that high. I believe I confirmed that uh, really early on. Well, regardless, my play has to be to go into uh, this Copperage because now I know that it's Scarfed. And my biggest fear in this situation was that Rotom would be able to just will o -wisp me and then I wouldn't be able to really do much. But since I know that this thing is Scarfed and I know that uh, Leaf Storm isn't going to do the whole most, I can take this as an opportunity to get a Brox. It's at minus two and uh, it has to fear some kind of damage, right? I, I, I know Heat Crash is a huge possibility here. And Heat Crash um, was kind of doing unfortunate damage. I, I, I don't think that it was ever going to be a real Oko unless it was banded, which is really unfortunate to me. It was really uh, disappointing in, in building how little damage he crash was doing. And don't get me wrong, it was still a lot of damage, but it really needed uh, a lot of help to do that much damage. Regardless, getting rocks up here felt like a really strong play. It does bring in the Gyarados, so it doesn't mitigate any type of heat crash or heavy slam that I would have gone for. And I don't think I would have done much in that situation anyway, but it does give me an opportunity to switch out here into my Milotic, I believe. And I do know that Power Whip is a possibility, but my main goal here is just to prevent this thing from Dragon Dancing up to like a million, right? I don't see my my Lodic as the most valuable here, like, right? Like, obviously, it's a very good mon for the situation, but uh, I kind of see this more as a secondary check to things, whereas kind of Eldegoss is a primary check, and I see other mons as kind of... Um, my primary offensive pressure where this is kind of like a catch-all check to things so i try to figure out how i want to play this especially because um with this milotic in i can prevent this thing from going up and dragon dancing up to a million again which is my main goal here right because if i go into eldgoss then it doesn't really prevent this thing from dragon dancing up as far as it wants and at the very least this one can put a stop to it and let me get some footing here so now from here i can get the toxic off I can at least get some chip damage going on and get a feel for what he wants to do. I was confident that I'd be able to take the power whip after the flame war pop, and I did. So now I kind of decide here if I want to play around any type of shenanigans that this thing would want to do. 
and I kind of expected, obviously, the Power Whip, because now I'm trying to, I'm starting to get a feel for what the moveset would look like, right? So, obviously, Power Whip, probably Waterfall, probably Dragon Dance, and some kind of coverage move. Obviously, I have to figure out what that is, and hopefully I don't get burned by whatever it's going to be. But he does go for the Dragon Dance as I go out into the Eldegoss here. Now, I feel like the Eldegoss is in a solid position to deal with whatever he wants to do. I can Cotton Guard up, I can get Leftovers, I can Leech Seed. I can kind of wall this thing as much as I need to uh, for this situation. That's kind of why the Eldegoss is here, and obviously it can Rapid Spin. Let's go for the Iron Head, which was really unexpected, and but you could see from that damage that um, it was doing really good damage, but it was doing manageable damage, right? I could deal with it, I can Leech Seed up, I can get Leftovers, I can get Regenerator, I can uh, do whatever I need to do, and I can essentially Toxic Stall this thing, right? Except I get flinched. Uh, I believe as I went for either the Cotton Guard or the Leech Seed there. Um, Leech Seed would have been a, be a better play if I did click the Cotton Guard. But um, overall, it was just a really unfortunate turn. I really wanted uh, to be able to do something better there. And then, ultimately, uh, he sees how much damage that's, that's doing. He knows how defensive I am. As I go for the Cotton Guard, so he's already keeping a, a step ahead of me. And I have to keep pace. I cannot let this Charizard get out of hand here. Uh, I know it's not a G-Max Zard that can, you know, airstream up and do whatever it needs to do, but this is still really pretty scary. So I have to figure out what I want to do. Part of me was thinking that I would uh, sack the Eldegoss here, um, and honestly, part of me was also thinking that this thing would want to try to set up something, like set up a Swords Dance or a Dragon Dance or something to that effect. Um, that felt, to me, like the most likely in the scenario because the, because of the way that he very forcefully brought this thing. In, I felt like he wanted to take this opportunity to set up, and if he did want to set up, then I felt like getting a leash heat up would be optimal. And unfortunately, if he did just go for Fire Blast, then I'd be sacking off the Eldegoss, but I felt confident enough that I could make this call here as he does go for the Flame Charge. We take that pretty well, and now we're in a position where I have to figure out what the heck to do. So I try to Cotton Guard up again, but he reveals that he's Air Slash. I thought that it was going to be some kind of a physical Charizard, but here it just reveals to be um just flame charging up for the speed boost and it probably explains why i took that that initial ch flame charge as well as i did but now i'm in a decent amount of trouble because now i kind of have to try to play around this thing i am gonna get healthy between the regenerator between the leaf seed and the leftovers i'm gonna get at an okay amount of health but it's never gonna look the best and i kind of have to figure out how to play this right so i'm kind of expecting a Another air slash here, and I can kind of go into my my Kaparaja. It can take a hit really well, and then I can play around it. I can go back into my Lodic and then take another hit, but he goes for the Flamethrower, which just destroyed me, right? Like, this was an awful turn for me. This really kind of started to set things in motion where uh, things did not look like they were going to look upward, right? So, taking that much damage on that Flamethrower really hurt my chances against a lot of things and now he's in a position where he can kind of play around it i felt like he was going to expect me to want to switch out or something to that effect so i could feel this kind of mind game going on where he can go for a go for some kind of coverage move he can uh go for another flamethrower um but i can bring in my lodic on that he can go for an air slash but i can stay in and take that and hit it back pretty darn hard so it put me in a really awkward position of we have to now kind of play mind games against each other to figure out what we want to do. And, and, and if he wanted to go for another flamethrower, I could bring in my my Dragapult for free. My Dragapult could be Scarf for all he knows, right? So um, there were a lot of possibilities for what could happen here. I kind of take a middle ground play. I go into my Lodic, hoping that this thing would want to go for another flamethrower. It does, but again, the thought of this thing going for an Air Slash into my Milotic terrified me. Even though... Uh, I'm really not doing anything to this. I really need... He has all the momentum on his side, but he's, he's getting chipped down a bit by the Leech Seed. At least my Milotic can stay up for another turn. Uh, even if this is a sack, it's in, it's an acceptable sack in this situation. And uh, you can see I'm hovering over the Dragon Ball a little bit. So I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about every possible bit of um, coverage that this thing can have. Obviously, Dragon Pulse is a huge, huge possibility here. Um, but I'm trying to get a feel for what the overall set could look like. So I'm trying to just figure out however I want to play this. But he does go for the Dragon Pulse, which does give me a decent amount of information. I do just sack off this Milotic. 
I'm trying to get a little bit of um, of a footing in this situation so that I can start to get some momentum going. But Dragon Pulse really scared me because now I really don't have any good options of what I can bring in here on a plus one Charizard. So I believe what I end up doing is bring in the, Ma the Malamar. Yeah, there's a Malamar play. And my Malamar is really specially defensive again. It's built to kind of take on the Poltegeist, which isn't here. So now that the, so now this thing is kind of free to take on whatever special attacker he has. And I can kind of... Um, take any special hit and hit this thing back reasonably hard so that's my only goal here and i really don't have the best option so yeah obviously my plan here was to kind of sub up oh and um this was this was a an uh, an attacker that can take a hit from poltegeist and not get strength sapped right that was su super important because if he strength saps me he's going to regain hp but he's also going to raise my attack through contrary but um i do take a hit reasonably well i can just get a night slash off i'm going to get leftovers and that lead seed off so i am doing okay for myself here and i believe here i start to think about getting a sub up um i believe this is the turn where i try to get a sub up because this thing is going to go down a lead sheet no matter what happens and being behind a sub would be just fantastic for me he goes for the air slash and now i am pretty darn concerned he gets the crit and he gets the flinch so i'm not behind a sub and this again, this was just another awful turn for me. I don't know how to how to, how to sugarcoat this, right? Like I would have been behind a sub, and with a very I shouldn't say that with a decent amount of HP left, um, and I don't know, it was pretty tilting, right? Like I was pretty honestly mildly tilted throughout this entire match. It was kind of difficult for me um, to want to play this, and I knew from the beginning that I wasn't going to record this live i kind of felt like i wanted to take a step back just kind of um take this for myself and not kind of feel stressed to 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 want to perform in front of in front of um in front of cameras or a mic or whatever the case may be i wanted to kind of take this match more laid back and I, i'm starting to kind of feel stressed out and tilted so um Either way, even if I did get the sub up, it wouldn't have never ended great because it, it allows him the Rabombi for free. The Rabombi can bug buzz. So part of me is frustrated because I didn't think that through well, well enough. Uh, and part of me is just tilted because of the situation. But it does allow me to bring in my, again, very specially defensive Copperaja in for free. I resist both of his stabs. No access to HP fire or anything like that. I can get a very free Heavy Slam off. Heavy Slam plus Stealth Rock is going to do a very decent amount to whatever wants to come in. So... I'm okay with however this wants to play out. However, I do have to play my Copperaja really, really safely because I did have to eat that flamethrower means that I am a very, very low amount of HP and I have to play out um, whatever happens here really well because if I cannot let this um, this uh, Rabombi beat me in the end game. So I, I end up going for the Heat Crash, actually. I guess I hard read the... the the Rotom to come in, but uh, I guess it covered most of my bases because it covers the the, the Rabombi. I actually ran random mods calc. I wanted to be 100% sure that that he crash would have O-code the Rabombi guaranteed. So I checked on that. I checked on the Rotom, and I really needed that extra damage on the Rotom, um, so I could deal with that better as well. And um, I could just manage, you know, whatever wanted to come in with he crash. Even the Gyarados, it, it would have gotten most of its damage off with the Stealth Rocks. But regardless. Uh, Heavy Slam wasn't even doing that much more than Heat Crash anyway, so it does go for the Iron Head uh, into the Eldegoss. Well, my Eldegoss is really defensive. I'm feeling okay about um, how I'm looking right now, except um, my Eldegoss is getting, unfortunately, pretty darn low, and uh, I have to start at least thinking about in my head um, whether I want to switch out for just Regenerator and try to get some stuff going, but I believe I just tried to go for a Leech Seed here. I kind of did expect him to, to want to switch out. Yeah, I, yeah. This covered all my bases in case it did want to switch out. I could uh, also attempt to play around a, a few things. Uh, whatever wanted to come in, being able to, to, to lead seed on switches is so so satisfying. Uh, j just in general, I love using Eldegoss for that alone. Um, and obviously Eldegoss isn't doing much on its own anyway, but I, I really do like how I've been able to play it throughout this this season, but it does allow in there, there won't be for free, which is really concerning, but, uh, this is going to allow to me to bring in my Copperaja, and again, my Copperaja does not have a lot of uses left. I'm going to have to play this Copperaja really conservatively, but the fact that my Leech Seed is up, and the fact that I can get very free damage off with Stealth Rocks, uh, on this following turn makes me feel a little bit okay, but that book was just uh, so much damage. It is genuinely getting really concerning with my Copperaja. I really have to play this perfectly for the rest of the match. 
but at the same time this um Arombi is getting worn down uh it is heavy duty boots but it is down to 75 percent just on lead seed alone it it, it looks like right, right around that mark so i'm feeling okay about it right now and obviously um i can get a little bit of damage off here but the better play would have been to preserve this comparaja for later however i do get a very free heavy slam off and it just does so much damage to this to this phalanx right like that damage was probably pretty necessary right and uh yeah so i'm obviously right now i'm also mildly regretting my cop raja set because um my cop raja is lumberry it was specifically to take on the rotom mo because i thought the rotom mo would be slightly more defensive it, and if i can eat a will-o-wisp i can heat crash it and then on the following turn i can um facade it if i have to or, or, or whatever the case may be but uh if i was leftovers this would have been a very very different ball game but uh here like a little bit of a fool i allow my well obviously okay so i was afraid of the nova tree right so i wanted to attack into it but looking back on it that play didn't make sense because i did more than enough damage to uh ko with another heavy slam after the nova tree however now i'm now it's kind of dawning on me you can see that I paused a little bit in in uh, the Pokemon screen. It's dawning on me a little bit that I really did not um, do not really have any answers remaining to uh, Robombi, and that is really really dawning on me because I'm playing out how I want to. I'm figuring out how I want to play this in my head. So I'm free to go into my Raichu, and I'm very free to Volt Switch. This. Um, this phalanx didn't go for an overtreat, so I am free to outspeed it and do whatever the heck I need to. I'm feeling okay about that right now. And it's just going to be tough here because whatever I, I bring in, he has good counterplay to it, right? Between the Avalug and the and, and the Rabombi, right? So I can't bring in the, Eld, the Eldegoss, even though I really want to. Um, The Dragapult's tough. It, it is a tough bring. And... I don't know how I want to play this. Ultimately, what I should have done I, is I played too conservatively around my, around my, um, around my, what is that thing called? Um, Malamar, right? I think if I'd gone into the Malamar and if the Rolling comes in, the Malamar would have to take a fat, um, Psycho Cut if the, if the Avala come in, came in, then I can um, superpower it. I don't know. Probably the Ma probably I was afraid that the Malamar would open the door for a Quiver Dance, which realistically it probably would. But then the Malamar only has to do seventy five percent. But I don't think the Malamar was that offensively invested, so I don't think I get there anyway. So I don't know. It was a t very very difficult position for, for me to be in. I think. But even on, on, on this play, right, I, I ran a bunch of calcs, I think, and I knew that this was going to be a roll. But this was a roll that I felt like I just had to risk. But it really wasn't, right? So all I really had to do was click U-turn, go into Malamar, attempt to take one avalanche. I either do or I don't. Um, but regardless, I get the chip off that I need for for probably just to bring in Raichu and start firing off th Thunderbolts and starting off and starting to try to do something. But again, that opens the door for Rabombi to start to Quiver Dance. So I probably have to Volt Switch, but I don't know. It, it really depends. Point is, I just act something that isn't Dragapult, right? Dragapult was my win condition. Because legitimately um all i needed was a little bit of damage onto this avalug and i'm pretty positive that i won because um the entire rest of his team was weak enough that shadow ball tears through his team with just a little bit of chip onto this avalug i really had to play this more carefully i had to be more cognizant of my checks to Rabombi, but at the end of the day his team was weak enough that shadow ball except for the avalug that shadow ball would have cleaned up the team and as it stands the fact that i gave up my dragapult on a pretty silly roll to, to try to risk it means that i no longer have any answers to, to rombi i volt switch into the Eldegoss, and what's going to come out i mean it's not too difficult to guess at this point um and yeah I'm, I'm i'm just really disappointed in the way that i played this um obviously his rombi is is in a prime position to get a quiver dance up and ko my entire team at this point um, I attempt to go for Leech Seed here. Maybe I can, you know, stall this out. Maybe I can make something happen. But I'm really never in a position to realistically do that. 
Um, he has super effective damage for the rest of, for the rest of my team, and just a moonblast for Raichu. So, yeah, like I said, it was, it was just really disappointing because I felt like I definitely could have played this match better. And we were talking after this match, and it does feel like I actively threw this match by giving up my Dragapult there. Obviously, again, I had to play this perfectly because this Rowan was so much of a threat that if I gave it one Quiver Dance, it just beats my team. What I had to do was I had a U-turn out into something to get some chip damage onto the, onto the Avalug. From there, I potentially, you know, win the match. If I had U-turned into the Malamar, let's assume... Or no, I could have U-turned out into, into the Raichu. I could have given up the Raichu. That's fine. I go into Malamar. Malamar gets a superpower off. Um, pro it probably takes multiple superpowers, realistically, but it doesn't really particularly matter that much because the point is, if the Avalux switches out, then it switches back in at 50%, and my Dragapult deals with it easily. Um, if it stays in, it, it, it lets me go. It lets me um, boost up higher through superpower. Then the Rombi comes in. If the Rombi comes in, it's never allowed to Quiver Dance up because at, at that point I'm boosted up so high that the um, Psycho Cut's going to be guaranteed. I get through the Rombi and then Dragapult just does the rest for me. So I massively, massively misplayed. I like I said, I just actively threw this match away, and it's really disappointing. I'm really disappointed just in myself and the way that I, you know, built. I, I built okay. I just didn't build great, and I didn't put the time in that it, that this match deserved. And uh, I'm really disappointed in how I thought about how I played this match. But once again, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the NCP and uh, a few more weeks of the TBL, and uh, more stuff will be coming out once the TLC drops. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, out.